for coming to this meeting. May I request the Corporate Secretary to please certify on the sending of notices to the stockholders and to the existence of a quorum for this meeting. Mr. Chairman, I hereby certify that notice of this meeting had been sent to the stockholders of record as of April 14, 2020, through the following methods. By publication in the Philippine Star and the Philippine Daily Inquirer for two consecutive days in both online and print formats. By posting on the website of the corporation and by disclosure to the Philippine Stock Exchange. Thus, the stockholders have been notified of this meeting in compliance with applicable rules and regulations. I hereby certify that there are present in this meeting, via remote communication or by proxy, stockholders entitled to vote representing 83.74% of the corporation's total outstanding shares, and that this meeting is therefore competent to transact the business provided for in the agenda. A quorum is present, Mr. Chairman. There being a quorum, the annual meeting of the stockholders of Robinson's Land Corp. Mm -hmm. May I request the Corporate Secretary to share with us the rules and procedures for this meeting. The rules and procedures are set forth in the definitive information statement and in the explanation of agenda items integrated into the notice of this meeting. All tabulation results for this meeting are subject to validation by CCIF, Gores, Venayo, and company. For the information of the stockholders who are with us now during this broadcast, the corporation has requested stockholders to send their questions or comments by email. Questions which were received by May 7, 2020 have been collated and selected questions will be answered later on. The corporation will reply to the questions and comments not taken up during this meeting through email. Let us now proceed to the next item in the agenda, the approval of the minutes of the 2019 Annual Meeting of Stockholders. May I call on the Corporate Secretary to present the results of voting for this agenda item. Mr. Chairman, copies of the minutes have been distributed to the stockholders by providing the link to the said minutes in the information statement and by showing the QR code on the screen prior to the meeting. The minutes have been approved as submitted by votes representing 82.95% of the total outstanding shares of the corporation. Thank you. The minutes are hereby approved as presented. Moving on to the next item in the agenda, may I now call on Mr. Frederick Goh, President and Chief Executive of the Corporation, to present his report together with the audited financial statements for the preceding fiscal year. Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A pleasant afternoon to the members of our board and to my fellow shareholders. I hope that all of you are fine and feeling well. I will now proceed to give you my annual report. I will now report the financial position and financial performance of Robinson's Land Corporation for the calendar year 2019 and for the first quarter of 2020. Discuss the performance of each of our business units and conclude by updating you on our growth plans and future strategies. RLC continues to have a solid, diversified and dynamic portfolio with presence in five major sectors that drive the Philippine economy. First, in the retail segment, we are able to capture domestic consumption in our 52 malls across the country. Second, in the growing IT business process management sector, we continue to be a leading office space provider through our 23 office developments and three work able centers. Third, we take part in the tourism industry through our diversified hospitality portfolio consisting of 20 properties. Fourth, we service the demand for homes with our over 100 residential projects. And lastly, we are now part of the emerging logistics industry through our industrial facilities. In the Philippines, RLC has a wide geographical reach that spans as far north as Lawag in Ilocos Norte and as far south as General Santos in South Cotabato. We are currently present in 59 cities and municipalities and 28 provinces. Our investment portfolio generates high quality recurring revenue stream from our malls, 
offices, hotels, and industrial leasing businesses, which accounted for 69% of revenues, 82% of EBITDA, 75% of EBIT, and 70% of net income in 2019. The balance was from the sale of residential units and land parcels that form part of our development portfolio. On the other hand, in the first quarter of 2020, the development portfolio took the larger share of the numbers as we transitioned to a new accounting treatment for residential realization. The investment portfolio accounted for 42% of revenues, 55% of EBITDA, 44% of EBIT, and 40% of net income for the quarter. Riding on the momentum of successful strategic initiatives, RLC finished 2019 and the first quarter of 2020 on a positive note. In 2019, consolidated revenues registered at $30.6 billion, up 3%, mainly driven by the strong performance of recurring income businesses. EBITDA also increased by 5% to $17.2 billion, while EBIT grew by 3% to $12.3 billion. The year ended with a 6% rise in consolidated net income to $8.7 billion from $8.2 billion in 2018. Last March 16, 2020, the entire Luzon and other areas in the Philippines were placed under an Enhanced Community Quarantine, or ECQ, to curb the spread of the COVID-19 virus. We have felt the most impact on our mall and hotel operations. However, our broad business footprint and diversified revenue stream helped cushion the blow of this unprecedented event on the company. In the first quarter of 2020, despite the slowdown in our mall and hotel operations, the steady performance of our office business and the adoption of a new accounting treatment for our residential division resulted to a significant 70% growth in consolidated revenues to $11.6 billion. This drove a 59% surge in EBITDA to 6 billion pesos, lifting EBIT up by 82% to 4.7 billion. RLC finished the quarter with a remarkable 82% increase in net income to 3.3 billion. RLC maintained its solid financial position with total assets of 189.7 billion as of December 2019 versus the previous year's $174.2 billion. Total shareholders' equity ended at $100.1 billion from $93.9 billion. Earnings per share posted at 1.67 pesos per share, while net financial debt-to-equity ratio was healthy at 36%. As of March 2020, RLC continued to have a healthy balance sheet and sound capitalization with total assets of $194.8 billion and total shareholders' equity of $103.7 billion. Earnings per share was at 0.64 centavos per share, while the company's debt levels remain to be well-managed with net gearing ratio of only 38%. In the past five years, Robinson's Lance Kagar, or Compounded Annual Growth Rate, has been stable as a result of steady earnings flow from the investment portfolio and growth from the development portfolio. On a KGAR basis, RLC posted revenues at 11%, EBITDA and EBIT at 12%, and net income at 10%. The Commercial Centers Division accounted for 43% of total company revenues in 2019. Mall revenues increased by 11% to end 2019 at $13.2 billion versus $11.9 billion in the previous year. Full-year rental contribution from our four new malls strategically situated in the provincial cities of Ormoc, Iloilo, Tuguegarao, and Bukidnon fueled growth on top of same mall rental revenue growth of 7%. These resulted to a significant increase in EBITDA by 15% to $8.8 billion, pushing EBIT up by 22% to $5.2 billion. With public health and safety in mind and in full cooperation with the government, we have temporarily closed our malls except those areas that are being occupied by tenants providing essential services. 
These are supermarkets, banks, pharmacies, and BPO spaces. And we have waived rental for non-operational tenants during the ECQ. As a result, mall revenues dropped by 8% to $2.9 billion in the first quarter of 2020, causing a 1% and 5% drag in EBITDA and EBIT at $2.1 billion and $1.1 billion, respectively. In 2019, RLC opened Robinson's Galleria South, its third lifestyle center under the premium Galleria brand. It is the first world-class full-service mall in San Pedro Laguna, featuring modern interiors and beautiful artwork designs. With this latest addition to its growing mall portfolio, RLC now has 52 malls, nine of which are in Metro Manila, while 43 are situated in growing urban areas nationwide. RLC also opened the new expansion wing in Robinson's Magnolia, its upscale mall in Quezon City, featuring a refreshed open-air plaza, additional lifestyle stores and dining options, and other unique retail offerings. The new malls brought total GFA to approximately 3 million square meters and total leasable space to 1.5 million square meters with over 9,000 retailers for a system-wide occupancy rate of 95% as of March 2020. 2019 was another banner year for our office buildings division as it posted the highest revenue growth among all our businesses and contributed 17% to consolidated revenues. The success of our leasing activities for business developments, namely Cyber Sigma, Cyberscape Gamma, Exa Tower, and Zeta Tower, and rental escalations in existing office buildings contributed to a 24% hike in revenues to 5.3 billion. EBITDA and EBIT likewise exhibited significant growth of 21% each to 4.6 billion and 3.7 billion, respectively. We continue to operate our office buildings and some of our office tenants remain operational even during the ECQ. Hence, revenue still posted a significant growth of 27% to 1.4 billion in the first quarter of 2020, arising from the full year contribution of offices completed in 2018, as well as contribution of new offices completed in 2019. EBITDA and EBIT accelerated by 34% and 42% to 1.2 billion and 1 billion, respectively. In 2019, we successfully completed Cybergate Magnolia above the mall in Quezon City, Giga Tower in Bridgetown, and our second built to suit office development in Duisita Tarlac. These projects received strong interest resulting to signed commitments from IT BTM firms and multinational companies due to their prime location, large floor plate, efficient and modern facilities, and PESA accreditation. With these new additions, our office buildings division capped 2019 with 23 operational sites in strategic locations for a total net leasable area of 592,000 square meters with an average occupancy rate of 98%. With its customer-first approach, our office buildings division recognized the need to address the growing demand for flexible workspaces. Hence, in 2018, we launched our very own flexible office space brand called Work.able. Derived from the words work and enabler, Work.able offers flexible workspace solutions such as private offices, hot desks, meeting rooms, and event spaces to startups, freelancers, multinational corporations, and other clients with build-to-suit office space requirements. Our maiden site was opened in 2018 in the Ortiga Center with 55 seats. Last year, we opened our third site in the Exazeta Towers, Bridgetown, with 277 seats. Occupancy rates stood at 94% and 82% respectively. Leveraging on the potential of the local hospitality industry, the Hotels and Resorts Division continued expanding on the back of its long-term strategy 
to become one of the best and biggest multi-branded hotel portfolios in the Philippines. Contributing 8% to total company revenues, hotel revenues soared by 23% to $2.4 billion through higher occupancy rates of company-owned brands, Go Hotels and Summit Hotels, and buoyed by increased average room rates for our international hotel brands. In addition, we turned around the decline in the previous year's EBITDA performance with a 4% increase year-on-year -year to end at $702 million. Additional depreciation costs from new hotels, however, caused a 19% drag in EBIT, which ended at $343 million. The hospitality and leisure industry is suffering the most immediate repercussions of the COVID-19 pandemic. With a massive contraction in demand and limited operations, our hotel revenues fell by 10% to $468 million in the first quarter. EBITDA plunged by 51% to $81 million, while additional depreciation from hotels opened in 2019 resulted to a negative EBIT of $24 million. Last year, we successfully launched Dusit Thani Maktan Cebu, our first foray into the luxury resort niche, and opened Summit Hotel Green Hills in San Juan City, the sixth hotel under the company-owned Summit brand. During the early part of the ECQ, most of our properties had to temporarily close down. Only five of our 20 hotels were operational in the last week of March to serve guests from the BPO industry and long-staying guests. Driven by successful project launches and fueled by strong demand from local and foreign buyers, our residential division posted another record-breaking net pre-sales of $20 billion in 2019 a remarkable 31% increase year-on-year. Year. Realized revenues climbed by 5% to end at $9.1 billion to account for 30% of consolidated company revenues. EBITDA surged by 32% to $3 billion and EBIT increased by 33% to $2.9 billion. We have some important changes in our residential business this year. In the first quarter, we adopted a new accounting policy and started to recognize revenues based on a buyer's equity threshold of 10% from the previous 15%. Apart from the new accounting treatment being the standard industry practice, it is our intention to make our financial statements more timely and reflective of actual performance. As a result, total revenues realized more than doubled to $6.7 billion compared to the previous year, while EBITDA and EBIT more than tripled to $2.6 billion, respectively. On the business side, we will be making significant strategic changes. In response to customer needs and market dynamics, we are merging our three existing vertical residential groups namely Luxuria, Residences, and Communities, into a single brand called RLC Residences. We believe that a single brand will allow us to optimize our resources and give us greater market recognition to become a bigger player in the residential space. It shall also provide internal focus on the value proposition of our residential business by delivering one seamless experience to all our customers across all channels and markets. Our singular purpose is to build beautiful, well-designed homes that all stakeholders will be proud of. In the meantime, our first quarter net pre-sales level increased slightly by 4% to $3.9 billion. The next two slides show the condominium projects we launched last year, namely the Sapphire Block East Tower, located in Ortega Center, Galleria Residences Cebu Tower 3, Cirrus, and the S Tower in Sync, both located in Pasig City. The combined sales value of these launches is Sales take up across all the four new projects are quite remarkable, indicating robust demand for new homes in well master planned communities. The company 
reach new heights with its joint venture projects with a combined estimated sales value of over 47 billion pesos. Under our partnership with Shang Properties Incorporated, we launched Aurelia Residences, our iconic luxury residential condominium situated along McKinley Parkway in BGC. On the other hand, in partnership with Asian powerhouse Hong Kong Land Group, we launched Velaris Residences, our premium condominium project in Bridgetown East. Lastly, in partnership with DMCI project developers, we launched Sonora Garden Residences, a modern contemporary multi-tower residential development located beside Robinson's Place, Las Piñas. Formed in 2016, the Industrial and Integrated Developments Division continues to be a reliable, steady source of new revenue stream. Operational industrial facilities registered lease revenues of 138 million last year, while EBITDA and EBIT ended at 35 million and 9 million, respectively. In the first quarter this year, lease revenues reached 51 million up by 73% versus same period last year due to the opening of a new industrial facility in Calamba, Laguna. EBITDA ended at 11 million, while depreciation from the aforementioned new industrial facility dragged EBIT to negative 2 million. The total leasable space for this division has reached 77,000 square meters with locations in Sukat, Muntinlupa and Calamba, Laguna. Both sites are faring well with occupancy rates of 100%. Apart from lease revenues, IID likewise recognizes developmental revenues from the sale of commercial lots. In 2019, IID recognized 321 million from the sale of a prime lot to the JV company formed by RLC and DMCI. EBITDA and EBIT ended at 203 million each. On the other hand, revenues of 45 million pesos were recognized in the first quarter of 2020 pertaining to a portion of the gain on sale of land to Shang Robinson's Properties, Inc. EBITDA and EBIT were at 39 million each. The company's first destination estate development, Bridgetown, was officially inaugurated last September 2019. The highlight of this sprawling development is a bridge that runs across the Marikina River and connects Quezon City and Pasig City. Situated at the heart of Metro Manila, Bridgetown is a 30-hectare destination estate envisioned to be a sustainable, self-contained community complete with office, residence, hospitality, retail, recreation, education, and transportation facilities. Under development is our second destination estate called Shera Valley. Shera Valley is an 18-hectare property located in Cainta and Taitai, Rizal. 2019 marks the successful sellout and completion of residential condominium units in Phase 1 of our Chengdu Panpanjie project in China. We will recognize revenues from the Chengdu project after completely satisfying regulatory requirements for the turnover of the units to their individual buyers. For our malls division, we plan to increase our footprint by 3% with the opening of a mall in La Union and the expansion of Robinson's Place Antipolo and Robinson's Place Dumaguete. In the following year, we plan to open Opus, our premium mall in Bridgetown, and two new malls in Gapan and in Balayan. These three new developments will add 7% to our total leasable space, boosting our mall portfolio to 1.7 million square meters by the end of 2021. For our office buildings division, we have a robust pipeline comprising of four new office developments, namely Delta Tower 2 in Davao, Luisita 3 in Tarlac, Bridgetown East Campus, and Cyber Omega in Ortigas. These new offices will expand net leasable area by 14% in 2020 to approximately 
676,000 square meters. The following year, we target to complete Shera Campus within Shera Valley, Cybergate Iloilo 1, Cybergate Bacolod 2, Cybergate Galleria Cebu, which will grow our net leasable space by 8% to 731,000 square meters. For our hotels and resorts division, we plan to increase total hotel room count by 10% in 2020 with the opening of Summit Naga, Go Hotel Naga, and Go Hotel Tugegarao. In 2021, we intend to add 15% more keys with the opening of Westin Hotel, Summit Gen San, and Go Hotel San Nicolas. To provide the best possible guest experience, we are doing a refresh of our older GO hotels and renovations in Crown Plaza and Holiday Inn. RHR's continued evolution story goes beyond the brand refresh of our existing portfolio and our massive organizational buildup. In line with this vision, we are now creating our very own first five-star homegrown hotel brand, Philly Urban Resort, the embodiment of true Filipino hospitality. Our mission is to provide exceptional guest experience while enhancing shareholder value and capital yield, tying it up with our plans to expand our portfolio by building our very own three to five star hotel brands. For our residential division, following our robust project launches in 2019, we plan to launch about 10 billion to 20 billion worth of new projects in 2020 to take advantage of the continued demand for Philippine residential condominiums from domestic end buyers and foreign investors. The Industrial and Integrated Developments Division will reach 94,000 square meters in leasable space with a new Kalamba warehouse in 2020. Next year, we plan to tap new territories and develop industrial properties within the province of Pampanga. On top of this, we will engage in the strategic acquisition of vast tracts of land that are optimally located within the government's infrastructure projects to add to our growing value of township estates. Aside from Bridgetown, we are currently working on two other destination estates, namely Shera Valley and Montclair, a 200 hectare development in Pampanga. The IID will likewise continue to focus on the exploration of innovative real estate formats, new business ventures, and strategic partnerships in our mixed use developments to further strengthen our earnings. In 2019, RLC spent 25.4 billion in CapEx for its Philippine operations for the development of malls, offices, hotels, warehouses, the acquisition of land, and the construction of residential projects. For 2020, our original CapEx budget was set at $27 billion, of which we have already spent $5.9 billion during the first quarter. In light of the extended ECQ, we have tentatively reduced our CapEx budget to $24 billion, subject to change depending on market conditions post-ECQ. We will continue to monitor developments and adjust our CAPEX budget accordingly. Our existing land bank in the Philippines now totals 788 hectares with an estimated value of 48 billion. And we continue to be on the lookout for land bank opportunities nationwide. To support the company's funding requirements, RLC intends to offer peso denominated fixed rate bonds in the aggregate principal amount of 10 billion with an oversubscription option of up to another 10 billion. Subject to regulatory approvals, the bonds will be comprised of two series, maturing in three years and five years respectively with semi-annual interest payments. Just recently, Phil Ratings has assigned an issue credit rating of PRS AAA with stable outlook to our proposed bond issuance, which is the highest credit rating. The rating took into account the company's competitive position, healthy liquidity, sound capitalization, and solid fundamentals 
to temper the immediate impact of the ECQ and the COVID-19 pandemic and help recovery in the medium to long term. The overall safety and well-being of our customers and employees remain to be our top priority. We have implemented strict sanitary and hygiene measures such as taking temperature checks and the installation of hand sanitizers in all the entry points to our properties. We are also doing regular deep disinfection of our properties, especially in high touch areas such as escalators, elevators, and electronic directories. In the workplace, corporate policies have been instituted to use digital or online platforms for corporate communications and virtual meetings in order to limit physical contact. Remote working arrangements have been put in place for employees as well. In addition, as early as January, RLC launched information campaigns apprising its stakeholders of the risks of the coronavirus and ways to prevent its transmission. To ensure that our services remain available to its customers, we have skeletal workforces deployed in various geographic locations where we continue to operate during the ECQ. To a certain liquidity and enhance financial flexibility, we have initiated a project prioritization program to manage our CapEx spend. In this program, we have evaluated which projects in our current pipeline shall be continued, deferred, or stopped. Post ECQ, we shall revisit the deferred projects as we closely monitor the economy and specific relevant markets. Lastly, we are already calibrating our re-entry strategies and workplace reintegration in preparation of business resumption. Our main focus is to ensure a safe environment for our customers and employees in order to rebuild workplace and business confidence. The company shall continue to keep abreast of news and guidance from the government, its instrumentalities and health agencies and incorporate their directives and or recommendations in our business and workplace continuity and resiliency plans. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. May I call on the Corporate Secretary to present the results of voting for the approval of the audited financial statements for the preceding fiscal year. Mr. Chairman, we are pleased to report that stockholders representing 82.78% of the total outstanding shares of the corporation have approved the audited financial statements of the corporation for the preceding fiscal year as presented. The report of the President is hereby also duly noted. The report of the President is accordingly noted and the audited financial statements for the preceding fiscal year are hereby approved as presented. We now go to the election of the members of the Board of Directors may I request the Corporate Secretary to read the names of the incumbent members of the Board of Directors. The incumbent members of the Board of Directors are Mr. James Elbo, Mr. Lance Y. Bokwe, Mr. Frederick Vigo, Mr. Patrick Henry Sigo, Mr. Johnson Robert G. Go Jr., Ms. Rubina Y. Bokwe Pen, and the independent directors are Mr. Artemio B. Pangaliban, Mr. Roberto F. De Ocampo, Mr. Emmanuel C. Rojas Jr., and Mr. Omar Byron P. Lear. Thank you. May we now have the list of nominees for election to the members, Board of Directors and the voting results. Mr. Chairman, in accordance with the nomination process stated in the bylaws of the corporation, the following have been nominated as members of the Board of Directors. Mr. James Elbo, Mr. Lance Y. Bofuwe, Mr. Frederick D. Bo, Mr. Patrick Henry C. Bo, Mr. Johnson Robert G. Bo Jr., Mr. Rubina Y. Bofuwe, and as independent directors, Mr. Artemio B. Pamaniban, Mr. Roberto F. De Ocampo, Mr. Emmanuel C. Rojas Jr., and Mr. Omar Byron T. Lear. There being no other nominations, the affirmative votes in favor of those nominated have been tabulated, and the following are hereby 
hereby declare that the duly elected members of the Board of Directors of the Corporation for the ensuing year until their successors shall have been elected and qualified. Mr. James L. Ho, Mr. Lance Y. Bokumway, Mr. Frederick D. Ho, Mr. Patrick Henry C. Ho, Mr. Johnson Robert G. Ho Jr., Ms. Rubina Y. Bokumway Peg, and as independent directors, Mr. Artemio V. Pampanipan, Mr. Roberto S. De Campo, Mr. Emmanuel C. Rojas Jr., and Mr. Omar Byron T. Let us move on to the next item in the agenda, which is the appointment of the external auditor of the corporation. May I call on the corporate secretary to present the results of voting for this agenda item. Mr. Chairman, the accounting firm of CSET Corres Delayo and Company has been nominated as the external auditor of the corporation for the fiscal year 2020. After tabulation of the votes, the appointment of CSET Corres Delayo and Company as the external auditor of the corporation has been approved by stockholders representing 82.88% of the total outstanding shares of the corporation. Thank you. The accounting firm of CSIP, Gores, Belayo & Company is hereby appointed as the external auditor of the corporation for the fiscal year 2020. Let us proceed to the next item of the agenda, which is the ratification of the acts of the board of directors and its committees, officers, and the management of the corporation. May I call on the corporate secretary to present the results of the voting for this agenda item. Mr. Chairman, the list of acts for ratification of the stockholders are shown right now on the screen. Copies of the said list have also been distributed to the stockholders present by showing the link and QR code to the said list on the screen prior to the meeting. After tabulation of the votes, we are pleased to report that stockholders representing 82.76% of the total outstanding shares of the corporation have confirmed and ratified the acts of the board of directors and its committees, officers, and the management of the corporation for the period beginning from the last annual stockholders meeting up to the current stockholders meeting as duly recorded in the corporate books and records of the corporation. Thank you. The acts of the Board of Directors and its committees, officers, and management of the corporation for the period beginning from the last annual meeting of the stockholders up to the current meeting of the stockholders, as duly recorded in the books and records of the corporation, are hereby confirmed and ratified. We will now respond to questions which were earlier submitted by email. Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The first question is, how has COVID-19 affected RLC's business? For our mall operations, our 52 malls are closed. The only operational stores inside our malls are the supermarket, pharmacies, drug stores, banks, and food takeout and delivery. We have waived rentals for our non-operational tenants during the ECQ period. For our residential division, we haven't booked any sales since the start of the ECQ. Uh, we will make up for this after the lifting. Although we do have some online sales of about 200 million, we will process these transactions later after the lifting of the ECQ. For our office buildings division, all our 23 office buildings are open and our rental revenue from this business is generally intact. Lastly, for our warehouse leasing business, there is no disruption and we continue to collect rent. In general, uh, what we are practicing during these trying times is consistent with what other industry players are doing. The second question is, what are your plans post-ECQ? We have business continuity plans in place and we continue to take care of our employees. We have also established the company's re-entry plans across the country. As a matter of fact, 
we have already reopened 12 of our malls in GCQ areas. We are making sure that we practice all the precautionary measures mandated and suggested for the safety and protection of our employees, our tenants' employees, as well as that of our customers. This ECQ has also forced us to learn new ways of doing business. Our digital team in particular will have to beef up as we have a lot of work to do. The third question is, how is your financial position? RLC's financial position remains solid with about 5 billion of cash. Our net gearing ratio remains low at only 38%. Our total assets are at 195 billion, our shareholders' equity at 104 billion. And uh, we signed up new bank loans during this ECQ, which is a testament to the faith of the financial institutions in RLC. Our finance department is also now preparing for a three-year and five-year 10 billion peso bond offering next month. Uh, this scheduled bond offering has also secured the highest credit rating of AAA from Phil Ratings, which is a testament to our financial strength. We believe we are in a healthy financial position to navigate the challenges brought about by the new coronavirus and we continue to seek opportunities and new ways of doing business to deliver long-term sustainable value to our stakeholders. Lastly, can you provide updates on your China project? For our China project, we actually have very good news there. After the ECQ started here in the Philippines, our Chengdu team secured the sales permit for the additional components of phases one and two. We were very happy with the warm reception of the market because despite the lingering effects of the pandemic in China, we sold 94% of the 564 condominium units and 100% of the 64 duplex villas that we opened for sale. And all of this was done in just a few days. The average price per square meter that we secured for the condominium units, as well as that of the duplex villas, were higher than our first phase uh, sales last year. is something we can use to model what will happen here in the Philippines two months after ECQ, I think we have something good to look forward to. Thank you. Are there any other matters to be taken up for consideration of the stockholders? There is none, Mr. Chairman. I wish to announce that on May 13, 2020, the board approved the following. A, a regular cash dividend in the amount of 25 centavos per share to stockholders of record as of June 10, 2020, which shall be paid on July 7, 2020. And B, a regular cash dividend in the amount of 25 centavos per share to stockholders of record as of October 1, 2020, which shall be paid on October 27, 2020. This ends the 2020 annual stockholders meeting of Robinson's Land Corporation a link where a replay of this meeting may be viewed shall be made available at the website of the corporation. Thank you very much for joining us.